Good evening, hello, and welcome to another episode of This Week in the News, brought to you by my ridiculous morning hair. I'm going to be looking at a couple of stories today, but first off, Intel released an absolute beast today. It's called the 7980XE. It released a bunch of other processors as well, but nobody's really interested in that. Now, everybody knew that this was going to be released and that it was going to be an 18-core CPU as opposed to the 16-core the CPU of the AMD Threadripper, which means this is going to inevitably turn into a mine's bigger than yours competition. Uh, but Intel is winning pretty spectacularly with this new CPU. Um, everybody thought it was going to be kind of like a marginally faster um, processor because it's only got two more cores, but it beats everything in every benchmark hands down. Um, when it's overclocked, it's when it becomes really impressive because then it even beats like i7 7700Ks in single threaded performance, which is insane. An 18 core processor beating a a quad core kind of single threaded monster at its own game is pretty terrifying. Although when you do overclock it, you do probably need to rent a nuclear reactor because it does use all of the power. But you can get it up to like 4.6 to 4.8 gigahertz on 18 cores. It's terrifying. Uh, it seems though that the biggest limitation is the X299 platform because uh, the VRM overheats like crazy at this point. And apparently reviewers have been saying that the biggest limitation when it comes to overclocking the 7980XE is the actual motherboard VRMs, which is a bit weird because I don't think that's ever the case. So they're gonna have to use monoblocks and stuff to like liquid cool the VRM and then they'll be able to see how fast it actually is. And another problem with Intel CPUs is that they use toothpaste between the actual die and the integrated heat spreader, so you're gonna have to deal with it. And because it's a $2,000 CPU, that's not gonna be the most fun process because you know if you slip with your knife, you're just gonna cut the CPU in half and that's terrifying. Um, oh yeah, but I did forget to mention that. It is a lot faster than everything. Um, it seems to be about 30% faster than Threadripper, um, pretty much across the board. Uh, but it does cost two two thousand dollars so it's a thousand dollars more than anything in fact it's by far the most expensive CPU or uh, consumer CPU ever released um, the previous crown went to the 6950x which was released for a thousand five hundred dollars which at that point people were like this is madness and then Intel just releases a two thousand dollar CPU but it is ridiculous uh, there's recently been a huge controversy around the EU and the way that they've dealt with, um, with some findings around a piracy study. So in 2013, there was a study commissioned to see what actual effect piracy has on the income of, of movie studios and game studios and so on. And uh, the study was conducted all the way through 2014 and the results were released. Seemingly all of it. So the EU released the study and it showed that there was a marginal effect. Uh, I think the actual percentage was like, was like a 7.8% drop in revenue for, um, for movie studios when it came to, to, to pirating. So if there's a huge amount of pirating, they lose about 7%, which is tiny. I mean, it, it, whenever this issue is framed from that side, from the movie studio side, it, they make it seem as though the, the piracy industry is making them all go hungry. I mean, you, 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 see, you kind of imagine George Clooney sitting under a bridge and kind of trying to barter heroin off of some homeless guy because he doesn't have any money left because of pirates. Um, but it's 7%, so that's not a huge deal, but the EU released that information. But then it actually came out um, quite recently that they kind of hid most of the, of, of the document because when it came to actual games, when it came to, to video games, the findings actually couldn't find a statistically significant uh, correlation between, between piracy and its effect on the income of game industry, or of the gaming industry. In fact, in some cases, it seemed to actually help the gaming industry because people would pirate the games sort of as a demo um, play the game and they'd be like, yeah, this isn't completely horrible. Uh, let me let me actually buy it from 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 the maker. Um, 
So the EU actually tried to suppress that information. And finally, a last two quick stories to round off the day. First of all, Atari announced quite a while back that they're getting back into the console game. And this left a lot of people pretty disinterested. But it's starting to look like it's actually going to be quite a great little console. It's going to be called the Atari Box and it looks great. Uh, it's going to have an AMD APU in it. But the thing that's the most interesting is the, the developer's attitude around the console. So they said that usually consoles are quite, quite a specific tie-down experience. You use one shop, you use the Xbox thing and that's about it. But Atari wants there to be a lot more flexibility around their console. They want it to be more like a PC that you plug into your, into your TV, which sounds like a great idea. And it's going to cost between $250 and $300, and it's going to be potentially released in around spring of 2018. So it's going to be a while uh, before we realize kind of how, if they've delivered on, on any of the promises or not. And finally, apparently Microsoft had plans to develop a wearable Xbox which is quite strange, I don't really know how that would work, but the plan was that when the whole wearable thing was exploding in 2013, I think the plans were, Microsoft decided that the perfect wearable would be Xbox branded. Um, apparently it was gonna have a heart rate monitor in it and it was gonna somehow have an Xbox experience. I don't really know how you would play a game on a wearable. Um, but apparently it was supposed to be used in conjunction with with your phone but when the actual when, when the actual lumina brand started falling apart because nobody wanted to buy a microsoft phone they kind of scrapped the plans for it uh, it was supposed to be released in 2014 i am pretty glad it wasn't released because it sounds like quite a bad idea just generally anyway that's the end of this week in the news in the tech news, sorry. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.